Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and in this video I'm going to show you how I made this particular artwork in almost record time. So, the first thing I did was I put everything in a folder and kind of played around with some ideas. I originally had no idea what I was going to do with this artwork. Um, kind of just went in blind and had to fix it all up later. So I went for kind of a laying down pose at first, but I ended up not really liking it. So, that's that. I was kind of going for like a maid outfit almost, but I ended up changing my mind later on. So here's where I started playing with some ideas. I saw this cute pose on Pinterest of a character just kind of lying down on a bed, having light shine through. I thought it was very cute, but also a little bit sexy. So I decided, hey, I want to do that too. So, I also didn't do guidelines like I usually do, which, again, if you've seen me when I'm there, whenever I don't do guidelines, it kind of makes iffy results. But that is the first step toward speed whenever drawing, is make sure you have a good reference and you have something guiding you. The more guided you are in your process, the easier you'll have. Um, I actually have aphantasia, so I can't see things in my head. So having a reference is almost entirely necessary. Otherwise, I'm just going in completely blind and have no idea what I'm doing. So here is about the point where I decided that this artwork was going to be a Fuwawa from Hololive. Because the moment the tail and the collar get in, that's exactly when this artwork turned into what it was going to become. Drawing guides is super important for planning and making sure that things are proportionally correct on the character. Um, the issue with this artwork, I actually made this artwork in an hour and 45 minutes, which is crazy fast even for me. And there were actually some drawbacks to doing that. Um, for one, some of the pose is a little bit off and not 100% correct. Um, the eyes, I felt like I could have done a lot better with the eyes. But I ended up not doing so great with the eyes this time. So that's a consequence of going fast. But at the same time, I had been gone at a convention for three days. And I had just come, came home and wanted desperately to draw so bad. So then I start drawing the ears. Make sure they're nice and fluffy. The hair on the first pass was okay. But I needed to fix it in the line art. But it, it wasn't too bad. In a weird way, this kind of looks like in its sketch form. Like a... Uh, Oh, goodness, what's her name? Like, Hollow the Wolf. Which, she's another cute character. I sh maybe should draw her at some point, too. So I'm adding all the base colors in to make it look correct. I left the background white just because it kind of makes the light shine through the character. Now we're going to start adding a multiply layer here pretty soon after I'm finished coloring the... Uh, bedspread. There we go. Now, I have everything that I draw in folders. That speeds up the process too because you can do he edits on everything at the same time a lot easier. At least in my opinion, it's easier. Use the selection pen. It, it's an incredibly powerful tool and I highly recommend anyone use it, especially if you're going for like cool gradients and whatnot. Did a tonal, uh, tonal curve and some level correction to make it look more like the final piece. That way, I've got all the planning in mind now. Added some wildness to the hair, which I love. If you've seen my work, you know I love wild, crazy, frizzy hair. Now we're on to the line art. And this is the part where I run out of things to say because line art is the same no matter what. But... If you watch my other videos, you know that my opinion of line art is that it's a refinement tool. It's not necessarily there just to copy and make thinner lines. You want to improve what's already there and make it stand out more. You make mistakes while sketching, so whenever you're in the line art phase, you can fix those mistakes. It's more about adding details and refinement. I love adding seams to clothes. It's it's so much fun. Um, 
just adding a seam makes it look more realistic and a lot better. Um, I kind of, I'm not super proud of the coloring on the clothes this time. I think I did okay, but it's not the best. Um, now, the line art is usually where people slow down in speed, but I, I tend to be pretty quick with it because I've been doing line art for 10 plus years now, so I kind of have a rhythm for it. Um, so, the I know this is kind of cliche, but all I can say is practice, practice, practice. Make sure you have some stabilizing on your uh, pen tool. That'll definitely help your lines be a lot smoother and cleaner. Um, to make that option appear, you got to go into pen settings on the uh, pen tool and click correction. And there should be an option for stabilization under the correction tab. I had a lot of fun with the hair in this one. Um, though the rendering of the hair, I felt like I didn't do that great on. So my bad. It's so wild and crazy. I love it. So yeah, the, the longest part of the drawing for me is the sketch and the line art. The rendering I do super quickly. Looking back, I'm not sure if I liked the side hair that I did because it, it didn't feel like it was affected by gravity very much. But the issue is... Um, Fuamoko are dog characters, so having, like, human ears appear freaks some people out. I don't mind it that much, but, like, there are a lot of people who are like, ew, just pick dog ears or no ears. <laughs> but I understand that opinion, even if it's not my own. I love long, flowy hair. It's so pretty. But we're getting toward the end of the line art, so here pretty soon we'll be able to do a flash course in uh, rendering. I'll see if I can keep up. So now I started adding the tail. I changed how I did the tail in this one just ever so slightly to make it look a little more fluff fluffy. Almost said floofy. All right, now it's time to start putting in the base colors. Or do the eyes first, my bad. I jumped the gun a little bit there. <laughs> Again, like I said, I'm not super thrilled with how I did the eyes this time. It just doesn't... It doesn't pop the way my eyes usually do, so... Oh, well. Add the eyebrows... Now, I made the background green, that way I can see the rendering as I do it. Because it's just easier to see through things. You have little green gaps where you don't color. Sorry for the pauses, sometimes I have to retrace my thoughts and make it come out a bit better. I separate my uh, rendering into different folders, all under one main folder, which is called color. Being organized with your art is super important for making it look good. So I started by kind of adding the shape of the character's uh, skin and made sure it looks round. If you, Whenever you're drawing roundness, you want to think of it like a sphere. The same way you would color a sphere, you would color something round. And you have to keep in mind the muscles and the different uh, casting shadows on top. Some uh, rim lighting and ambient occlusion. So the hair, as I was talking about earlier, I was really lazy with the rendering in the hair. And I don't think I'm fully satisfied with it. So that's my fault. I should have done better. And sorry I don't give you a very good example of how I usually render hair. I was... Super lazy this time, and that's on me. Should have added more uh, lighter touches in the hair as well. But I end up fixing a lot of the boringness with a multiply layer on top of everything later. 
I also felt like the rendering on the clothes could have been a little bit better, but I, I, like I said, I'd just gone back from a convention and I just wanted to make something quick for fun. All right, we are getting somewhere. So now we're going to add the uh, multiply layer on top to kind of, well, do the shading of the eyes first. Man, I always miss the eyes. <laughs> now here we go. I use my uh, some post-processing here, then the multiply layer, and I start slowly adding light back to the character. Just looks so much better when there's like a darkness to the character, when the background is so bright. Fixes a lot of the issues. Adding all the wildness to the hair that I love so much. Now some add glow layer to make it really shiny and make it glow. Now a tonal curve to add the finishing touches, some level correction. And there we go. So if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps out a whole lot. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.